Tell me, y'all, this is crazy. It works both ways. And, and, let me be on here. But that's what people are so upset about. But we can't let the globalists channel that into an explosion. But at the same time, man, th that is just insane. Well, they came out earlier, you know, and said the whole hands up, don't shoot thing was a lie with Michael Brown. So now I guess they have something that they can actually say and use. But I wonder well, if they will hands jump on up, this. we're going to shoot. But I mean, yeah. the guy's hands, he's standing there still. He yeah. makes no movement. His hands are up. And they kill him, and the cops act like it's no big deal. Right. He's blowing the video up right now. Okay. Uh, but Yeah, the, we're going to have it tonight on the They're trying news. to get this video taken down. The police department's put an announcement out of the sheriff's department. They're trying to get this pulled right they're now. They're going to try to report it and flag it on everyone's site that has it up. It's ridiculous. That's what they're doing. They they have troll armies now that they're they're running out there. And if you put anything up that the establishment doesn't like, they sit there and say, this violates community guidelines. I feel yeah, offended by this. straight. Just because we're not for executing police and we're not for a war with police, we also don't support the police being an armed gang of thugs. And, and that's what we talked about, how this is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Anytime a cop gets shot and they start rolling out this martial law scenario, this just so, see, we need this. We need tanks. Mm. We have to have this, well, this that's apparatus. What, and that's what the criminals don't understand. The more and more they do this stuff, the more and more these guys are going to beef up their security. Oh, yeah. And like right. you said, there's going to be an MRAP on every corner versus, uh, you know, a Ford, a uh, Taurus, whatever they have. And it's not going to be about protected service. It's going to be pure revenue generation. Exactly, because they have to put gas in these giant uh, MRAPs. Oh, it's, uh, it's a very expensive, too. <laughs> and, and I just read uh, City of Chicago is suing their red light camera maker that they bought the cameras from and set up to revenue generate because they don't work and people weren't paying their tickets. So now they're suing that company for $300 million, which I kind of feel bad for the company because... No, no, but it's all unlawful. You oh, it is. Write the summons. Exactly. There has to be a witness. The red lights are yeah. illegal. Yeah. Red oh, totally. Oh, yeah. Whenever yeah. I get something like that, I throw it in the trash can and say, see me in court. I'm not going to do that. I'm not paying that. Yeah. But what, what you have, though, you have a company who says we have a need. <laughs> there's a need for these red light cameras, which there really isn't. But they make it. The city goes after it because they're so greedy and they want to have they're like, we, we want to have uh, all this revenue. So we're just going to put them up everywhere and just screw people over. And then when people revolt and say, you know, hey, we're pushing the cameras. We're putting Easter eggs on top of the cameras. We're not going to pay the tickets. Well, then they go, wait a minute. We spent a ton of money on this, and now it's not reaping the benefits now that we wanted. Now they have to send guys out to actually monitor the red light cameras. It's, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so now they're mad, so now they want to go sue the people that they made. They signed the contract with. It's, it's ridiculous. Don't put them up in the first place. It, it, totally, it totally pisses me off. Now, here's another story out of the New York Times. Turkey arrests three vice news journalists on terrorism charges. This just came out today. Uh, the three journalists for Vice News have for been formally arrested in southeast Turkey and charged with aiding a terrorist organization four days after they were retained, detained while covering the conflict between Kurdish separatists and the Turkish state. So I guess they're covering both sides of the story, well, which that's the, the Turks terrorist don't act like. Right there. Let, me, let me tell you, the Turks will come down hard on you. There's some uh, Bilderberg, old Bilderberg footage, I think from 2006 or 2007. Of uh, of Jim Tucker getting harassed by the Turks, and I mean that those are people you don't want to mess with. That reminds me somewhat of uh, was it uh, Amber Lyon when she went out to Bahrain and she was uh, documenting what was going on out there. Then they essentially detained her and uh, gave her a very uh, limited view, like we'll drive you around to the places where we want you to go and see what right. we want you to see. Then Look, here's back. a mall. Everybody's happy. Yeah, <laughs> nobody looks like with North here. Korea when you go in. They <laughs> if they allow you to come in, they have like this little area set up that like looks nice, but really on the outskirts, it's just horrendous. Poverty, people have no food. Yeah, it's and like this a is model. just another another yeah, instance exactly. of how they want to control the narrative. Um, you know, and the Turks are definitely, I think, can be implicated in, in giving these missiles and this whole missile deal with Benghazi, giving missiles to ISIS. You know, how how does ISIS come up with missiles on their own? They're well, not building. Well, we they know don't they have get, weapons. They get uh, grenades airdropped to them. You know, courtesy of Western governments. Yeah, no, it's ridiculous. Hey, I want to I want to change gears here and get into uh, Clinton. Now that um, people, uh, Larry Larry Nichols, Nichols was talking about Clinton today, how he thinks that when this stuff goes to trial, she'll want to use the emails. She'll say, hey, I want to use my emails as evidence. And they'll say, no, it's classified. Can't do it. We're going to throw the whole case out. And which is, is I could see the Clintons doing this. Uh, I covered this last night on the nightly news. This is from Breitbart. Exclusive, Hillary shared an email network with the Clinton Foundation. So her server at her house she had her personal emails, the ClintonMail.com, but they also had PresidentClinton.com, which was part of the Clinton Foundation. So everybody was using that server. And can you imagine all the people working for the Clinton Foundation, you know, hitting a phishing scam or something? And then that allows access to people to look at State Department emails. I don't understand how anybody in their right mind in America 
and still go out and support this woman with everything that comes out on a daily basis. People show up to her campaigns and they sit out there with these signs. I mean, I hope to God they're getting paid for that stuff. I mean, and that's not real. They I mean, I just don't understand how anybody, when all this evidence is out, at the end of the day, like you can sleep good at night knowing that you're going to vote for that evil human being. Yeah. That's the most evil person well, in the world. Well, that's just what they want. They just want her for whatever reason because it's a legacy. General Petraeus has been demonized for 10 times less. And if you don't get her, you're going to get Barry the Socialist. So that's that's what you're uh, that's what you're looking at. I want to go to Leanne McAdoo. Uh, did a report on, on the Clinton emails. It's a real short one. Well, we're going to go to that and we'll be right back after this. I used uh, a single... Uh, account for convenience. Obviously, uh, these years later, um, it doesn't look so convenient. Uh, and most importantly, I never sent um, classified uh, material on my email and I never received any uh, that was marked classified. 7,000 pages are set to be released from Hillary Clinton's private homebrew server this evening. Now, under intense questioning, the State Department admits that within this latest data dump of emails, about 150 of them will be upgraded to classified status. Now, the agency spokesperson stressed that the information was not marked as classified at the time, although he concedes that, you know, some changes are going to have to be made within the intelligence community. Obviously, there is absolutely no excuse for improperly handling sensitive information. All of these emails resided on a private homebrew mail server that Clinton had set up herself. She controlled it. It was away from the prying eyes of government inspectors and Freedom of Information Act officials. And it includes the 30,000 emails that Hillary Clinton already ordered to be deleted because she said they were personal in nature. Now, obviously, the question here is, would those personal emails include pay-to-play donations that were made to the Clinton Foundation. Now, let's not forget that while Clinton was steering American foreign policy as the Secretary of State, donations were pouring in to the Clinton Foundation. And this includes a deal that gave the Russians control of one fifth of all uranium production capacity in the United States. The company Uranium One donated $2.35 million to the Clinton Foundation. Those contributions weren't publicly disclosed by the Clintons, despite an agreement that was struck between Hillary and the Obama White House to publicly identify all donors. So could this be a reason why the establishment is throwing Hillary to the wolves? Her sloppiness could expose a lot of other shady business deals. There you go. That was some uh, interesting information from Leanne McAdoo. And I found this article this morning, exclusive jailed hacker Guccifer boast, I uh, used to read Clinton's memos and then do the gardening. And this is a really interesting uh, article. It's very long, talks about his life, where he comes from. This is a guy in a village who taught himself how to hack. One guy could break into the system and do what thousands of other hackers in China couldn't do. One guy can you know, can shake the system to its foundation. And I can't remember if jail. it's Guccifer or not, but I remember somebody hacked Bush's uh, computer. Oh, it was him. And uh, then they got a picture of him, like, painting himself in the bathtub. Yeah. <laughs> and all kinds oh, of a weird lot. stuff. Let me tell you, these guys, they're, they're doing soul searching because they realize what they've done. I mean, when you look at those paintings of Bush, it's sad. That guy is definitely sorry for what he, I hope he's sorry for what he did. I mean, <sighs> starting two wars. Have you seen that show, uh, that show, Mr. Robot? No, no. That's where they this hacker goes in and he goes to the evil core, all these different corporations, and exposes all the evil stuff they do. Their 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 past pedophilia, all yeah. this stuff, and just wrecks them. It's a really neat show. People have to check it out. I haven't checked that out. But here, going back to Clinton, this is why she's going to win. She's got one fifth of the delegates already secured for her nomination. This is out of Bloomberg. It came out on the twenty eighth. Um, as Vice President Joe Biden considers a potential run, Hillary Clinton's campaign is seeking to project dominance the Democratic National Committee meeting in Minneapolis. And it goes on that she has one-fifth of the delegates already um, sewed up in her favor. So Bernie Sanders, it, probably, it really doesn't matter, you know, the populist campaign you're going to run and try to get, you know, uh, college kids out there to turn into little socialists. Um, you're going to be beat by Clinton, unfortunately. And I, I mean, I'm, I've said it before, it's it, it's probably going to be a Clinton Bush. Well, it's still early uh, election. Though. It is still early. But Biden, you know what? Biden Bush might throw his hat there, and, and Obama's already said he's going to give him the tip. He's already going to back him. I don't think it matters. Well, at this we point. we talked to Larry Nichols, uh, the Clinton insider, and he was telling uh, Josh and myself.
that this was all pretty much a plan with Clinton. He said if Act he like was victim. yeah, if he was running this campaign, he would want her to be the underdog. So yeah. then when the time came, you know, she's going to have some massive resurgence for whatever reason and then she'll get the nomination. She's going to court. Oh, she's beat the charges. She's beat the rap. There's not they can't do anything. They can't stop her now. She's going to take it all the way. You see Chris Matthews getting a tingle in his leg as he talks about it. <laughs> and as I, I start mean, to vomit all over the floor. To totally disgusting. Hey, well, we're going to go to break here in a second. Um I want to go to Michael if I can. I wish I go to the other callers, but I want to play David Knight's report that he did two years ago now about the spy in the bag and how he, he got in there and other interesting killings that have happened. Uh, you know, people who said they weren't going to kill themselves but suddenly died. Michael, we have about less than a minute. What's your story of the local sheriff having issues with the DOD? It was the uh, actually the Department of Justice is what it was. Apparently, he did something during an arrest, punched another person. And uh, eight officers were put on uh, paid leave because they don't, you know, they told on him, I guess, is what they're telling us. They want the sheriff to resign. He says no, and he wants the names of the officers that are trying to pin this on him so they can be disciplinary action. Ah, so, yeah, you turn in one of your own, and then they want to find out so they can do do the dirty back on you. Well, you know, all I can say is, People who get into that line of work, they either really need to be really great guys. Or they're, they're, they seem to be either really great guys or really awful control freak type people. And um, I've, I've run into a few of them myself in the past, these control control freak type people. I've also run into some great cops. Yeah, you've got you to keep your nose clean in that job. If you don't, yeah. and as soon as someone has dirt on you, that's going to be held over your head. And even if you think that guy's your best friend, they're going to come after you. As and soon as soon as, as you start getting burnt out, get out. Yeah. You know, I support, hey, let's give them a month vacation every two years, I think, to let them clear their jets. Yeah, that's definitely a out. job you want a level-headed individual. Exactly. You don't want somebody who's really mad about their day. Now, we're going to come back. I'm going to introduce David Knight's report, and then that's going to be all for us in the fourth hour. This is Rob Dew, Jakari Jackson, Joe Biggs here doing the fourth hour of The Alex Jones Show, Infowars.com. Stay tuned for more. Hey, this is Rob Dew. This is our last segment of The Alex Jones Show. We're going to go right to David Knight's report talking about how this man killed himself and put himself in a bag. Well, three years after an MI6 codebreaker's body was found padlocked in a bag in an empty bathtub in an MI6 safe house, the London Metropolitan Police have ruled that it was an accident. Allow me to congratulate you on a brilliant bit of deduction. That's right, move along, there's nothing to see here. But there is plenty to see here about how governments work. His body was found inside a zipped and padlocked bag in a bathtub. No palm prints were on the side of the bathtub. No traces of his DNA on the padlock outside of the bag. His cell phone was wiped clean that day. And his employer, MI6, that's British Intelligence, didn't report him missing for eight days, despite the fact that his body was in one of their safe houses just blocks away from their headquarters. And just last year, the coroner concluded that he probably was killed by another person. Coroner Fiona Wilcox said that it was, quote, a legitimate line of inquiry that other spies were involved in the death of Gareth Williams, 31, a member of the UK's Secret Intelligence Service, SIS, also known as MI6. But Metropolitan Police said he probably died accidentally on his own, rejecting conspiracy theories. His family said, if this wasn't the SIS and it was the Cray twins or someone else, you would be investigating. You would have gone into far more detail. And there were some more details thrown in. He had $30,000 worth of unworn women's clothing, a bright red wig, and some suspicious sexual things there. But the coroner's investigation ruled that he was not gay, not a transvestite. Those things, I believe, were simply red herrings to distract people from what the real question is, and that is, how could he have gotten padlocked into the bag? The Press Association reported that a former parachute regiment reservist who specializes in rescuing people from confined spaces was unable to lock himself inside an identical bag. No palm prints were on the side of the bathtub, no traces of his DNA on the padlock outside of the bag. He said, I couldn't say it's impossible, but I think even Houdini would have struggled with this one. This is something we've seen, not just in the UK, but frequently in the United States, that people who have sensitive information about government secrets or about the people who run the government somehow just mysteriously die or commit suicide, even though they didn't have any history of being suicidal, and even though the explanations for their deaths make absolutely no sense. Take the case of Gary Webb, investigative reporter who supposedly committed suicide by shooting himself in the head 
twice. It was merely coincidental that he had exposed CIA and Reagan administration